there are a lot of complexities associated to drilling subsea wells or like land wells it take it requires some bit of planning getting the rig designing the well and then going ahead to execute but for drilling subsea wells you put in a little more work because there are associated complexities involved not just in planning but also in the execution you have to deal with the water depths you have to deal with the associated narrow moderate window caused by the water depth you have to deal with the logistics of getting equipment on location you have to deal with running the all the required equipment most of them on the seabed so we will be discussing those special equipment required to deliver these wells but before we begin to discuss all this equipment in detail we'll have to first remind ourselves and differentiate pick out pretty much the major differences between most of these wells that are drilled subsea and most of these wells that are drilled with equipment that sit on bottom good day everyone my name is ugo Koli. welcome once again to the second module of fundamentals of soft sea drilling operations we'll be talking about a whole lot with regards to soft sea operations this is pretty much um the meat of it we've gone ahead to introduce what it takes to drill soft sea now we'll be getting into the grind we'll be talking about um the major differences between land and soft sea operations just doing a quick recap then we'll go ahead to discuss in detail the equipment required to deliver these wells. So um, as we proceed, please do not forget to like, subscribe, and share. Moving right straight into it, um, on this slide, we'll be looking at the objectives and deliverables. What, do, what and what do we want to discuss? want to know the associated equipment required for drilling subsea want to understand the uses of this particular equipment the outline for this particular presentation will be we'll be looking at pretty much a review of the location and equipment categorization we'll then go ahead to look at land rigs or rather land operations and bottom supported rigs looking at that we'll see that there are there, there, some sort there's some sort of um similarity with those two operations so we'll just be looking at that we mentioned in our last model just be doing a quick recap then finally we'll be introducing the equipment for subsea well construction in black you see that everything in black are is the offshore terrain so we have the swamp shallow offshore deep offshore ultra deep of shorts all in black in blue are everything or rather wells that will use the surface bop so if you see the land operations the swamp operations and shallow offshore operations so shallow offshore operations include um wells that can be drilled from the ten tender assist rig wells that can be drilled with the jack up rig and if you look at there's a particular thing about most of these wells the vessels that will be used to drill those wells sit on bottom. So, code, once the rig sits on bottom, it's most likely that the wellhead and the blowout preventer is going to be installed on surface. Then moving ahead to what you see demarcated in green, sorry, in red, they are drilled with a subsea blowout preventer equipment and they will have the subsea christmas tree so everything is going to be sitting on the seabed so the key to that is anything that floats so the drill shape the semi-submersible most likely the bop is going to be sitting on bottom during the execution and post execution to cap the well you're going to have the subsea Christmas tree installed there on the seabed. So this pretty much summarizes everything. If you have this chart with you, it's clear to remember anything that sits on bottom is similar to
to land operations they'll be using the same kind of equipment most of the time anything that floats is going definitely is going to have the, the the systems there on bottom there are some there are some differences in some of these um, operations sometimes they sit on bottom and they would like to tie it back to surface but let's keep it let's keep it simple as we see right now so um i'm just using this chart to rather these pictures to buttress what we just um, discussed um the equipment you see this is the jack up rig it sits on bottom there's a platform where the rig is where the well is going to be drilled from so if you look at these wells you see some of the conductors sticking out from the bottom of the of the jacket going up to surface so these wells will be drilled and the wellhead equipment will be installed here on surface and same as the land looking at the land clearly here the is the rig is um skid over the the conductors somewhere down here and the wells will be delivered at the end of the day the so the welded equipment during the operations the blow preventers will be installed here after the operations you have the welded equipment installed so it's yeah this is in what this is offshore true this is in land but the equipment used to contain these wells while we drill them are all installed on surface so um there are some modifications and um sophistication drilling wells offshore why do we have this offshore operations like i mentioned in in, during the introduction they are very 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 expensive and because they're expensive there needs to be some sort of redundancy and having that redundancy in place is what gives rise to this special equipment now this equipment i would like to see that they are particularly very different from that of the land operations i'll give a very good example when i was in grad school and i was um and i was um reading all about the blood preventers subsea, i mean the um, blood preventer equipment that's the well control equipment this is what i expected the bop to, to be like this now this is a land what you see on this um slide is the land blower preventer this is what it should look like and that's the picture i had in my head guess what in the beginning of my career the first rig i ever visited was a semi-submersible and ladies and gentlemen this is what i saw and i was really bewildered i mean this is the size of human beings in relative to the blowout preventer that you will see on a semi-submersible or on a drill ship compared to what you can see here now this is not even the size this is not even the height of one of the accumulator bottles here so you see it's a huge difference so yes it's the same it's the same basic it's the same background they do the same job but there needs to be some sort of redundancy when you're drilling offshore why you have an, I have a problem with any of this um equipment while drilling on land it's you can just quickly go there and have a fix or something goes wrong you can quickly fix it up it's on surface but if something goes wrong while you are perhaps you have over a thousand feet water depth who's going to go down there to get it fixed discussing this special equipment where do we use them how do we use them what do they do i'll just I just have a snapshot of what um, the rig up is like when we are offshore. So looking here, here you can see your floating equipment. I mean, you can call it a semi or a drill ship. The connection from the rig, you're going to have a riser all the way. The riser is, the riser is your conduit all the way from um, the, the vessel to the seabed. And as it goes to the seabed, at, at some point, it is connected to the blowout preventer and all that is connected to either your temporary or permanent guide bees which is connected to your um with the h4 connector system connected to the high pressure wellhead housing and through all that you drill your well so as you're drilling everything is going through the annual loss of the well all the way down to all the casing joints you've rigged up you've um, installed all the way through the riser 
all the way to the solid control equipment somewhere on this rig. So this is what the whole connection looks like, unlike what you have on land. What you have on land is less, less, it's not as, sophistic, not as sophisticated as what we have here, but similar. So in discussing um, all the equipment, most of the equipment that we will be discussing for this model, we have, we'll be looking at the wellhead template, guide bases, subsea wellheads, casing hangers, seal assemblies, um, that you've been installing after installing your hangers, the wear bushings and protectors, what the crew will be showing ourselves, what the Christmas tree looks like. Talk about the debris cap that is used to cap it up once the work is done. We're looking at tie back systems, mud line suspensions, the BOP stack, marine risers, tensioners, and um, the wave compensator. So these are the equipments that we'll be looking through, we'll be running through while discussing subsea and subsea um, equipment. The reason why we are doing this is as we're discussing this talk, as we're discussing this equipment understand how they are, they, are being, they are being used and deployed it will give us uh, a good understanding of how subsea wells are delivered thank you everyone for you to like to continue to follow us on the channel ask your questions share like and please don't forget to subscribe Thank you once again for watching this video to the end. We'll see you on the next model. Bye for now.